Hey everyone, this is Unique from the YBF, and we're live in New York City for the world premiere of Creed 2, and we're here on the black carpet now. Stay tuned to see who stops by to talk to us tonight. First of all, congratulations on making Forest 30 for 30. Thank you. Uh, that's that's true. A lot has happened this year. <laughs> no, a lot has happened this year. Uh, thank you for that recognition, man. It was nice to be, you know, called out, one, for my age, but uh, two, just to be like, you know, uh, it's, it's proof that people were watching, you know, man, at a time where I was just kind of focused on my career and to just look up and have that moment and, and, and seize it, you know, it was it was exciting. You know, it, it's done great things for me to be labeled in that list and um, and it put me on blast so far as my age. Not everybody knew how old I was. <laughs> um, so my question is, how are you able to take this sequel and make it your own and showcase your sound? A lot of different areas. I mean, when you come step into a franchise like this, they have a certain formula you have to work within. So it's a matter of finding those pockets and moments that you can sprinkle your own tone and your own touch. I think for me, a lot of it happens in a relationship with Tessa and Mike, um, or Adonis and Bianca, so to speak. Their chemistry was alive, and I just wanted to take them to the next level so far as maturity and turning that I into we. Um, I think there's special, intimate moments in there that were like personal in my life even, that I think people will relate to. Um, and then beyond that, I think it was just the whole legacy aspect and how we stepped into the style and showing that you're really increased perspective in this one, you know, even through the fights. I know for every movie you have, you always on the screen in New York. What's the importance of doing that for the community that helped raise you? Oh, I mean, for all those reasons you just said, you know, it's the community that helped raise me. You know, you got to give back to the people that, that supported you from day one. Uh, I'm a product of my environment, so to be able to kind of go back to my high school, my church, community center, places that that uh, that, that 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 knew me from the beginning and show them the work that I've been doing while I've been gone is really important to me. So throughout your, your career, you've been able to portray so many different roles. What's advice you would give to young actresses that want to avoid being typecast? Goodness. Um, well, I, I think luckily we're in a time where that happens less and less. I think we're living inside of a time where there's so many conversations about representation, where we're seeing that black and brown people don't want to be boxed into spaces we're not allowing ourselves to. But I'm so inspired by people like Issa Rae and Lena Waithe that decide to sort of take agency and say, like, I'm going to write for myself. I'm going to produce things. I, if there's a lack, if there's a void in content, that I'm just going to fill that void by creating it. And it's, you know, those both of those women that I mentioned are people that started on the internet by hook or by crook they made a web series they put it online so I think now we there's so much accessibility with social media that you can really tell your story in a powerful way and have people see it so that I guess that would be my first advice just start some challenges you face and conquer um some challenges that I think I face I guess the biggest challenge was me not being um, open enough and not knowing how to and just being so like self-conscious about that and I feel like I'm finally in a place where that's not a worry for me and I'm just like fully giving it my all because it's like what do you really have to lose I, I always like try to tell myself I'd rather have done something and failed at it than say I wish I did that um challenges just life I guess probably letting trifling people like get to me like personally like like romance, you know, like luxury problems that I didn't ever have to have. But <laughs> that's really it. Everything has been a dream though. Like the industry is cool, it's chill. As long as you keep yourself around real ass people like Dreamville and Elite and Cole, you'll be okay. Who's the biggest trash talker between Floyd Mayweather and Muhammad Ali in your opinion? Oh, oh, good one. Uh, I would have to say Muhammad Ali for sure. Muhammad Ali. I would have to go with Ali. He was just smooth with his trash talking though, at the same time. Like he has the most memorable, like I can't even quote a Mayweather line right now at the moment because all out of it was about money. But if you go to Ali, there's so many that pop in the head that I felt like if back then he would have definitely got under my skin, man. <laughs> he would have definitely got under my skin and he backed it up too. So yeah, definitely Ali. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali because you know, I respect Floyd a lot, but Muhammad Ali made it with a lot of charm and flair and personality, so I would go with Muhammad Ali. Now Floyd is my favorite, but I'm going to go with Muhammad Ali, only because Muhammad Ali's statements and his trash still live to this day. Still live to this day. He has things that he said to people that everybody still say to people to this day. Like, you ugly came from Muhammad Ali. I'm sure it did. 
I'm sure he called so many fighters ugly. It just wasn't right. You are ugly. And then that's everybody else started saying it. Flow like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Rumble, young man, rumble. Come on now. Come on. Like, it's memorable. It's memorable.